Okay, I found it. Thanks. Uh, I will go by uh, the questions that have been posted one by one. <clears throat> so very first question is how will the dynamics of eligibility for hiring testers across all levels of one to eight is going to change? Uh, <clears throat> I think I uh, I could have loved I would have loved to understand this question better. But uh, if Neeraj by this you mean whether industry is going to hire junior testers more or senior testers more. I think the way I look at it, uh, trend is more towards hiring uh, mid-level testers. And it again also depends on the requirement that organization has. But looking at the scenario, I think <clears throat> there is still a demand for fresh testers who are having enough uh, sufficient background with terms of programming kind of basic testing knowledge where uh, they can groom this talent and shape them in better testers over the years uh, but again the need for specialist testers is not less but of course the the comparison if you compare the demand for junior testers or mid-level testers compared to the senior ones definitely uh, senior ones are not hired that often uh, the way I look at it uh, and preference is typically more to hire junior testers mid-level testers and then growing them into senior role because senior role more or less <coughs> depends on the organization it differs from organization to organization and I think uh, it, it's still a best idea to develop people into senior role instead of hiring them directly as a senior where there could be a culture mismatch or a skill set mismatch and all that stuff. Uh, but if you have something specific in mind, uh, I would appreciate if you can clarify it again here in your uh, comment and I can try answering that. Uh, all right, Mahesh wants me to stop for a while. Uh, Mahesh, okay, shall I say something about me? Well, my name is Lalit, as you all know, and I'm currently working in Germany with Zing AC. It's a, a social networking, uh, professional networking platform, just like LinkedIn, but we are pretty popular in Europe and German speaking countries. Uh, apart from that, I also look after Tea Time with Testers magazine, which is currently not running that often, but uh, yeah, I have been looking after Tita with Testers Magazine from seven years now. Once in a while, I assist James Buck in his rapid software testing online class. And once in a while, I also teach BBST Foundations class with Association for Software Testers, USA. Once in a while, I also conduct public workshops on exploratory testing. I keep learning, writing about testing. Whenever I get chance, I present at conferences currently. I have been uh, working more on promoting whole team testing, achieving whole team testing uh, work uh, in a workshop format and what testers in new era really need to work on or how organizations can develop testers to match with their uh, new requirements or changing situation across the market and development methodologies and all. So that's about me. I will. Nothing. So. Mahesh, uh, is it okay now if we start question? Do we have enough people live there? I'm not really checking too much here. <clears throat> Please comment uh, or just tell me on Messenger whether you want to wait for more people to join or we can continue. Okay, we can start. So, uh, as I was talking about question from Neeraj, the uh, question around how the dynamics of eligibility is going to change for hiring, and in my opinion, it again depends on the context. But the way I look at it, the, the trend is more towards hiring junior and mid-level testers and then growing and shaping them into senior roles. Uh, that's how I look at it. Then there is a next question. Can you please share your experience of journey of Tita time as well? I would prefer to answer this at last because there are more interesting questions further and I'm curious about discussing around those. 
suggestions you would like to give someone who has <clears throat> just started his testing career very interesting one uh, there is no best solution because our market and situations around keep changing however i would probably ask the person who is starting to be really good at his communication skills i think the top most important skill for a tester is communication and by communication i don't just mean being good with it the language and clarity of the message and all but it's like more in terms of their international uh, expertise and uh, being able to communicate the value of their testing asking questions getting information they want so good communication can be a very good skill for somebody who wants to start in his testing career and grow from there the second would be curiosity i would recommend or i would expect anybody who is starting their career in testing is generally curious and very curious about things around them the software they are asking more questions questioning everything and trying to find and validate their own understanding so curiosity is very important uh, trait uh, that i would expect and third one is courage by courage i mean the courage to speak up take stand speak up your truth communicate risks when necessary saying no when required typically my experience has been that testers are usually the scapes goat i hope this situation is changing and that typically happens because they lack courage they lack courage to say their truth they lack courage to say no they lack courage to communicate the risk properly so communication curiosity and courage are the three suggestions i would like to give whoever wants to start their career in testing and these are just very basic skills and there are a lot more interesting things uh they might want to consider while growing in their ladder okay now next question what would be your advice for a tester wanting to go into development and vice versa okay i wouldn't give any general advice here but because it really depends on what that person's motivation is i have worked with people who were excellent programmers suddenly they got pissed with their programming and they switched to testing and they are now really excellent testers but i have also seen uh some testers wanting to go into programmers and becoming bad programmer so in general i i am against this idea of converting a good programmer into bad tester and good tester into bad programmer however it again depends on your own motivation your skills and how do you look at these different uh, job roles and what do you want to achieve further from there uh my 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 personal preference would be to be a tester tester to stay a tester but having excellent technical skills i think that kind of empowers testers profile much better and um, i am a tester i am hardcore tester so i i wouldn't really personally want to go into full fledged programming mode but yeah i mean recently this year i have started to contribute more into bug fixes as well so i use my testing knowledge my experience of finding bugs uh, my experience of the code and the product to quickly analyze the problems and fix them or assisting programmer in fixing bugs on technical level so there are lots lot of interesting things that you can do on programming side without having to become a full fledged programmer uh but again the advice would be really validate your own motivations find out why you want to do it and if it matches with your skills your passion go for it if you just want to go to programming because you think tester role is getting killed and slowly dying then i don't think that's the right motivation unless you are passionate about it don't do it that's what i would suggest <clears throat> next one how should a tester prepare himself to fit into devops model interesting question so before that i would say we need to understand what devops really is and by we i mean my experience has been that different organizations teams understand devops differently the way i understand devops it is really more about collaboration between development and operations and coming together collaborating better to achieve a good quality software and by development i don't mean just people who write code it can also be typically programmers testers product managers your ux designers anybody who is contributing 
more on engineering side of the software development is developer. Uh, I think here in this particular setup, testers can play a very important role of a collaborator or someone who facilitates the communication between these two disciplines by closely interacting with both and acting as a connecting link. Uh, you know, because if uh, testers are skilled testers, I would naturally assume they are good at their communication skills, they are good at their analytical skills, they are good at their interactional expertise and these skills they can use to facilitate the communication and collaboration between different streams and if tester wants to prepare himself i would suggest uh, they should start working closely with other disciplines too not just their typical programmers or just the uh, software team but try to collaborate more with let's say infrastructure team your architects what they are building what kind of platform they are looking for what kind of assessment they are doing Try checking with you if you have mobile teams in your organization, what kind of things they are working on and try to understand it. Interact more with marketing, interact more with user care, interact more with your uh, design, product design teams. It, it, it's, it's more like understand the system around you, try to use your system knowledge and uh, you know try to bridge the gap. There is, is no silver bullet in my opinion, uh, but uh, to facilitate the collaboration, I think tester needs to use his own good testing skills, like I said, communication, interactional expertise, and analytical skills, and their ability to learn things faster, and then using that information and uh, learnings to facilitate the collaboration there. It is also possible that testers uh, might need to enhance their own skills more on technology side and platform side and programming side to better understand how other disciplines are working. So pick pick, pick what you would like to start from and try to understand there. I would suggest uh, once in a while go to your architects team if you have a central team who is typically looking after infrastructure, tools, release management, uh, pair with them, work with them, try to understand how they are doing things. and figure out how you can utilize their working knowledge more to facilitate collaboration between your team. So it, it, it's really more about your own efforts to understand different disciplines, your curiosity, uh, in my opinion, and how best you are able to balance these all things. Okay, next one. Is it good idea for a tester to excel in all testing areas like automation, performance, ETL, security, or be a master of one in current hiring context? Uh, well, since you mentioned context, I would say it again depends on context. And since hiring market kind of is very volatile and it keeps on changing, I would rather recommend a tester to be more adaptive and fast learner and be quick at learning. <clears throat> whatever is whatever new is expected from him of course you can automation is not an excuse i would say anymore the better you are at automation or rather i would i would phrase it more like the better you are with your technical programming or scripting skills i think that definitely helps you to you know uh uh cover your checking part of your testing much better so that you can focus more on your exploratory part and finding risk and risk-based um, testing, performing risk-based testing. So uh, it, it, it wouldn't hurt to know more than just one specialty thing and it wouldn't hurt either to be specialist but when you are specialist I think your, your probability of hiring kind of gets narrowed down, your options are less but if you are kind of generalist as James says, James Buck says, uh, then your your probability of getting hired is more. But again, specialists are specialists and generalists are generalists. My my personal preference is to be a generalist, but uh, with with uh, above 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 average or you know above par specialist skills in at least couple of the fields. And I think that that, that should be the uh good way or good enough way to go ahead i would say okay another question <clears throat> next one what is your take on various testing positions popular in market while hiring 
senior uh, software development engineering test q engineer analyst yeah i i think more than roles i would i would rather prefer to understand what job description says and even even better than that would be to really talk with hiring manager or whichever team is wanting to hire a tester for that team talk with them understand what they really want uh, titles can be roles can be sometimes misleading typically uh, organizations in my experience are more about giving <clears throat> catchy and shiny titles to attract the talent but sometimes the job description also and even the role differs from what the tester is actually doing in his team i i know one of my friend who was hired as a data tester uh, while his job was mainly data engineering and only 10 to 15% or rather 20% of his job was testing and 80% of his efforts were spent in managing the data so i am not not a big fan of excuse me big fan of going behind the job titles or uh, even taking job descriptions um, that seriously should you you should definitely take it serious but i would not rely on it i would prefer talking with a person who is hiring and by that i don't mean just recruiter i mean the hiring manager or the teams that you are going to interact with if you can try to talk with them understand what they want and then make a call whether you want to go ahead or not all right how do you like oh sorry how do you tackle hiring ideologies only if you are a test manager in your current organization will you be hired as the same or hire in new organization in hiring context what if your organization has different set position criteria i think this is more of a personal choice in my opinion than what organization wants it's like if you're a test manager and if you want to be a test manager in another organization then you may want to look for that option i have i have been pretty flexible in my career switching roles and responsibilities in tcs i was test lead then i was a, a test manager but then when i switched my a job i and i started with barclays i was individual test contributor as a senior tester and since then i i enjoy contributing more as a uh, tester in a team I, i i find it more exciting for myself maybe in future i will again switch to manager role so it 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 is in my opinion not, not really about organizations hiring ideologies it is more about what you really want to transition into and how flexible you are i i hope i understood your question correctly uh geosly if not then please ask again or please clarify and i'm i'm, I'm still here uh option testers can explore in devops field uh i think i partly answered uh, this in another question so there are multiple options and the key key contributor or key role that tester more probably would be performing in they also feel will be the facilitator the collaborator and someone who is acting as a connecting link uh, uh as far as it is about transitioning to some other role i i really don't know i would say i don't have enough insights into transitioning uh, from tester role into some other role in devops field but i personally feel testers are best placed to act as a very important factor in this entire devops scenario where they have more important role than anyone else i would say career transition options available from testing and how it can be achieved <clears throat> there are many options it depends on what do you want to move further to in my experience testers typically mature into becoming business analyst at least in india or service based industry situation sometimes they are also moving into test management role sometimes testers are moving into programming role sometimes they are moving into test architect or platform teams sometimes some testers are going into people management role and i i i would suggest testers do make very good people managers in my experience i have seen some of my good testing friends becoming excellent people managers talking about career transition options available from testing and how it can be achieved uh so as i said for different roles there are different ways to go further uh i was talking about uh, seven kinds of tester from james buck i think i would 
try to analyze my own type there and uh, based on what kind of tester I am, I might use that knowledge to figure out what further role I can develop myself into or how can I combine different skills within myself that best complement the further role I want to uh, achieve. Uh, but some of the straightforward options, in my opinion, are getting into business and analysis role, IT analyst role, or even people manager or test manager role are easier. A uh, product management, I think there is one more question about switching to BA or product management role. So I would cover that here right away. Uh, I think product manager um, is is vast role than just being a tester. Definitely testers, you can use their product knowledge, their quality mindset uh, in product management role. But it is more than that. You need to know, in my experience, uh, about your domain you need to know about marketing you need to also know about product design so and it's also about how you are able to negotiate between engineering teams and the business teams how you are acting a connecting link between both the teams how you are able to translate business requirement into engineering requirement in a way that still makes sense so it, it's uh, more about practice and your skills beyond just your testing abilities and uh, if you want to transition into that position i would recommend talk with the people who are already there in that role ask them what kind of skills they need what kind of preparation they require get them their guidance and start over i think that is the that is the good starting point in my opinion instead of hitting in the dark and trying to do things which may not work so ask the people you would like to uh, get into particular role get their guidance ask them and try to understand where you are currently and how best you can use your current skills and i a new one and move on to the next role okay i will quickly check the comment on video okay srini has asked question hello srini if quality is not valued bugs do not matter what will tester do? I think test again. Come on, why is my video getting ended again? Okay, so my my window says I my video has been ended, uh, but I would still continue uh yeah so srini coming back to your question uh if quality is not valued and bugs do not matter i, I think you are talking more about the situation where organization rely more on let's roll back thing but i, I in my experience um, testers here can really be uh uh what, what do you say risk assessment people and they can raise the flag so if you i don't know if you if you recently read michael bolton's tweet series very interesting tweet series where he explained how important it is for testers to be able to communicate the risk and explain their work because testing for me is not really just about finding bugs it is much more than that and this is why i try to uh, write the whole blog post around it they can be your advocates for testability they can be very good uh, partners for ux people they can be very good co collaborators with user research and marketing team so beyond finding bugs there is a lot testers can do and uh, again they can help people understand the value of quality by raising risk and making people aware of what they are missing so sometimes it's not that organization in opinion doesn't want to value quality it is probably because they are not aware of the risks associated with or the impacts associated with so someone has to take this responsibility and make it visible and communicate the risk what is happening and i think if you are able to do that then most likely they will value the quality and also the testers role there will be much more valuable than just finding bugs does that answer your question Trini, or you had some other context in mind you can comment here right on the video if you're there okay communicating risk is very generic why so i i think 
it is the very important skill a tester should have and it's it, 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 it doesn't come that easily with a tester it comes with a practice lots of awareness about system how how the feedback is getting degraded there are lots of ways a tester can communicate a risk and here again i would say interactional expertise depends whom you are communicating that risk to how you are communicating it and then how you are able to create a difference there am i clear there okay there are tons of other questions my goodness okay i will first now move on to the next one Shini, if you have more just let me know again and i i find this discussion very interesting one but for now i will move on to the next question i was talking about okay how to change your role from qa to devops guy considering every other company will consider you as a fresher i really don't know how to answer this first i i don't know why they would consider you as a fresher and i also don't know what do you mean by transitioning from qa directly to devops guy i i don't know anybody somebody who is a devops person you are either dev or you are operations uh or maybe my understanding of devops is wrong here uh yeah that, that's what i would say as a qa you can develop your skills to enhance this collaboration and understand the disciplines that you're interacting with other than engineering one to the best of your ability and i think that knowledge would definitely help you to land up in a place where that skill that experience can be valued and yeah maybe that 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 can help next one while moving to another domain say banking a lot of time i face this question where they ask you do you have any banking experience okay but what is the question here in my experience in some cases domain experience definitely matters i think Srini can also explain this when he's doing another ama uh, so sometimes your testing skills matter sometimes your product knowledge specific product knowledge or specific domain knowledge also matters and it's again context dependent so what an organization needs if they need and a product expert or domain expert then i don't think you can really compete there unless you have that experience i would rather try for something where my experience and skills are more compatible and giving me the opportunity that i would like to explore uh, transitioning to ba or product manager i think i explained it right <clears throat> sometime before uh, Mahesh, roles may always keep changing. How do you think tester can stay with the change curve at least, or if not ahead of the curve, what can they do and how? What can you do? I would suggest contribute and keep reading state of testing survey. Uh, we have been running it from last six years now, and state of testing survey has helped me to figure out what is going on in different organizations across the globe, how different testers, are looking at their profession what is changing for people what are the new skills or requirements in demand so that kind of helps you to be generally aware of the things that are changing so i think most important thing is uh, if you want to if you want to compete be compatible in the change curve you have to first understand what is it and you need an awareness so if you have that awareness you can then figure out where you want to go further uh, ahead of curve always in my opinion is kind of difficult because testing is very very dynamic field uh, there are lots of possibilities so i really can't comprehend this idea of being ahead of curve i think if you are ahead in something you will meet most likely behind something anyway so uh, what you can do you can increase your awareness and keep yourself updating what is happening what are the new skills what are the new methodological uh, technological and business model logical uh, advancements coming in and how you can try to fit into that role so for example when devops came in 
everybody was wondering okay what testers will do what testers will do and eventually testers had to figure out and i think they are still figuring out so it, it's uh it it starts with awareness and then doing your own analysis how do you want to go further because it's it's a very vast vast context and possibilities there are endless but maybe what can help in my opinion is again how adaptive you are how quick learner you are uh, how open-minded you are sometimes i experience testers being stuck in their comfort zone never wanting to come out and kind of that that is a that is a silent killer so as a tester i would suggest you have to be very open-minded for transitioning if your organization and context demands you to be very good at automated automation or very good at scripting or very good at uh, even programming i would say you have to do it it's, it's good if your organization context or your team context expects you to be more product savvy domain savvy then you you should be open to learn more about the domain there so again be open minded be be fast learner be curious learner be adaptive and i think that should land you into at least being compatible with the change curve all the time the more curious you are the more passionate you are about learning things i think you will always be fine there Next question, with so many sub roles within the role of a tester, how do you think, yeah, uh, tester can distinguish between actual calling and the buzzword? I would rather say it is again the matter of uh, personal choice and uh, also validating how much your actual calling is the real calling and how it gels with the market demand. Uh, again, here I would suggest to refer with something like reliable things like state of testing survey or if there is some other other quality report that gives you reliable information insightful uh, information about what is really happening uh, then that can give you the realistic idea of where you are and what your calling is and what is actually happening in the market and then what you should do about it uh, yes so key here is to find uh, to be able to distinguish between the buzzword again and whether it is really a thing that industry needs and once you are able to figure that out i think making a choice would be much more easier there but i wouldn't personally get freaked out or panic if there is immediate some some buzzword coming in market and if i have nothing to do with it for example there is a demand for blockchain blockchain my my current job role my current context of testing doesn't really warrant me to be so aware of curious or even expert in blockchain technology right now so i i, I even it is a buzzword or even if it is a demand in context currently i wouldn't bother that much about it but yes if i can figure out okay how understanding of blockchain and its implementation from different aspects can help me become a better tester or can help my uh, or can help me as a tester contribute more to that development then i might be able to figure out how i can do it and what can i do with that buzzword and my existing skills so it is more about understanding really what that buzzword is about why it is a buzzword and how you are currently placed with respect to that new thing coming in and what you can do about it and again there is nothing wrong if your actual calling tells you this is the right thing this is going to be the future and if you see it is happening why why don't you follow it if you if you can go for it okay next one if there is one thing you can tell both candidates okay people who want to get hired and hiring manager in order to bridge the gap what would be that one thing if i have to say one thing there are many things but one thing if i have to say i would say know what you want sometimes people are just appearing for interview in the hope that moving a switch making a switch getting some percentage hike on top of their existing salary and this is not really something i would call as a motivation as a tester if i want to change i would prefer to change more because of I want to learn something new i want to acquire new skills i want to grow up in my skill uh, set and get new experience as a tester and become better better professional thereby so it really depends on your motivation and 
so as a person who wants to switch jobs i would say know your motivation and act accordingly as a hiring manager i would say same thing know what you want just don't hide hire people based on canned format of hiring people typically now the way i look at it hiring managers are typically dev managers hiring testers and their sole emphasis is mostly on whether the person candidate is able to write scripts whether the candidate is able to do automation and they are really turning blind eye to other important things that do matter and it really becomes frustrating experience for tester as well as the team when they hire people based on something very generic and not something which their context really demands so make everything context relevant make everything context specific know what you want and i think that way uh, you will be able to find better match both for candidate as well as for the hiring team now i will check the video section okay there are a couple of uh, questions now i will try to see is it good to expertise in one domain like payments insurance i think punit i answered this question in a way domain expertise are always helpful there is nothing wrong uh, but my personal preference is to be a generalist and being skilled in some of the some of the skills like exploratory testing or let's say very good uh, programming skills and i think that should make you more adaptable to fit into a changing context and yeah if your current hiring situation says there is a big demand for payments and insurance and erp why not but again then there will be again another time demand for something else and you will have to learn that again so it it is not just about one particular thing for the time being it is more about how adaptive you are and how curious you are and how open minded you are to keep up yourself updating with changing hiring context and domain requirements coming back to shrini stakeholders know this already increasingly people are saying speed is valuable than quality shrini i i would rather say we should have one on one in this i'm i'm working in the organization where we i think we are having the right balance bit with the speed as well as quality uh yes quality is value to someone who matters as you already know uh but there are many different ways to look at it uh, uh but i have seen testers making an impact and making things visible and compelling teams to change their mindset when they had this notion of okay we can roll back any time or if there is a bug we can immediately patch uh, release and all teams have suffered miserably and it is still valuable if somebody is able to find those possibilities way before it goes into production so key here would be in my opinion as you ask what testers will do here testers can learn to be lean testers fast testers they can be able to they can you know fine tune themselves into a person who is able to find things much faster and not getting stuck up with the traditional way of being a bottleneck in the process i think why they don't value quality or why they want to get rid of testers is more because they look at this whole testing thing as a bottleneck and people who slow down things but if testers with their skills are able to change this perception i am very sure and i am convinced and i have experienced this that they are still very valuable uh, part of the system so it it really depends on how skilled testers are how they are able to communicate the value of their contribution and it's not just about communicating risk as you rightly said it's about their whole contribution to testing uh through their testing and uh as uh i wrote in my latest blog that beyond finding bugs and advocating or assuring for quality testers can do lots of other things like they can be a very good observer and analyzer who can help the controller of the system not to let the feedback getting degraded and have a better control over the collapsing situation they can be a very good partners with ux people and can collaborate them with uh, the system mindset and uh, find some better balance between system thinking and design thinking here <clears throat> then again they can collaborate more with marketing teams user care teams user research teams testers know the system so well that 
they are best placed to be a very helpful, influential connecting link between all these different units within organization and bring everybody together and make a valuable collaboration happen, in my opinion. So if you ask if organization doesn't value quality or if they don't value finding bugs more, what testers would do, I think testers, it's, it's a very good sign, I would say, because testers have a lot more to do than just finding bugs. They just need to know what is currently lacking in the organization, how good they are finding at finding problems and using their testing skills and their role to solve them. Okay, next question. Fresher because no experience in DevOps is probably what is meant there. Okay, uh, Mahesh, I will move to questions you have pinged me in Messenger. Question from Chandan Kumar. What should be the scenario for tester when artificial intelligence will come to market or what should I, what should a tester should learn for handling a scenario? So artificial intelligence has already come to market and the way I understand it, it is not easy even for artificial intelligence to replace human testers. Just just Google, I, I, I don't think I really have to answer this one. There are lots of interesting articles written, blog posts have made, discussions have happened. Uh, AI, in my opinion, is far, far, far way behind than uh, in, when it comes to replacing human tester. Uh, I would suggest one interesting article interesting article on the testerstories.com written by Jeff where he talks about having clear distinction between the purpose and I think that that post really makes it very clear of why we are overreacting to certain situations so don't I don't get scared I would I would say artificial intelligence still needs human intelligence to be better at it and then if your question is as a tester what should i do to learn from handling the scenario i don't know what you mean by that but if you if you mean uh, that will artificial intelligence replace me and what should i do to stay relevant i i would say don't be afraid learn how anti artificial intelligence works there is definitely a uh, good value in learning all these new technologies ai virtual reality and everything and try to use that knowledge to your advantage <laughs> Navin Kumar, what one thing that a tester should not do? Very good question. I never thought of it. I would say testers. Hmm. Let me let me find the one thing. There are in fact many. One thing a tester should not do is stopping to learn new things. The day you stop learning it, you are tester inside you is killed in my opinion so if you think okay I have landed up in a better job this is very good position I have and I'm now domain expert and if you kind of feel stuck or feel satisfied or saturated there and you don't really learn and you don't keep on learning new things I think you will eventually kill yourself in the long time so never stop learning never stop being curious about things and as a tester please please don't do that I would say Keep keep on learning new things and keep keep your curiosity alive. Puneet, is it good to expert in domain? Okay, we discussed that. Sneha, these days company looking for test service as that skills. Can you please provide your view in this? So Sneha, in my opinion, it, it's not it's not really just about as that, but it is more about testers with more programming skills or technical understanding, and I think it is definitely helpful. Not mandatory. There are organizations who probably don't need this, but in my experience, if you really can understand the architecture of your system better, if you can understand the infrastructure better, if you can understand the code, what it is doing, if you can analyze uh, problems in code, let's say by static review, uh, if you can write scripts, if you can understand your system architecture, I think this is very helpful for you, even as a tester to be a better tester to understand things much better and to contribute in a non-traditional way and I think that is at the center of it so having this knowledge and expertise here would not hurt I think it will definitely help you but again it depends on the organization and the context you're operating it is not necessary that you have to be excellent programmer or excellent in technical aspect 
but if you are then i i personally would say it is definitely helpful uh, i i used to be very traditional tester more with exploratory mindset but the more i have taken deep dive into understanding architecture technical aspects getting familiar with scripting getting familiar with production telemetry getting familiar with analyzing logs understanding the graphs i have really managed to find out more interesting things through my testing using this knowledge and i think this is how you make your role more relevant in changing context so don't get scared and if you get chance i would say start learning these things they would definitely help you in at least in current situation chandan what should be the market scenario of a test when okay it's repeated okay certifications how much are they of any value any options apart from istqb certifications in my opinion are nonsense don't don't waste your money if you are at all curious about learning go for courses that teach you skills and not just concept there are so many good courses there is rapid software testing by james bark there is bbst foundation series from ast of so association for software testing came kenar is teaching his own courses go for these things go for things that are teaching you skills that are giving you real life experience that are giving you and making you aware of real life scenarios and making you aware of skills and challenges at the same time that you will have to face going for something where you just have to read book mug up the options and tick mark the answers and calling yourself expert is absolutely nonsense idea in my opinion I'm a STQV Foundation certified tester back from 2008, and I never found it of any value for myself. So don't waste your money; it's a trap. And I would also say, if somebody insists that you should have certification, ask them why. If they cannot explain, that's definitely not a good place to work as a tester. I would say, go for a place where you are valued more than your certifications, and you are valued for your skills and not for the papers or degrees that you hold. I have. like a programmer or tester or analyst who did not have any official high flying color background in terms of degree or paper so it's irrelevant don't don't fall into that trap okay so i think i'm pretty much done with all the questions that i had okay this is more of a discussion that is happening here uh when a user sees your new buzzword ask what does that mean okay so she, it, this is more of a discussion and i think i think there are no more questions left uh is there anything that i should be answering any questions further and i think one was left was about my journey more questions in timeline i really don't see them the last one i see here is thanks from sneha Okay, Shrini is asking, are you catching with ML and AI? No, Shrini, I try to understand what artificial intelligence is doing. We in our organization uh, once in a while have high quick projects where uh, we try to figure out what's new in technology field, how we can make best use of it. And one of the projects done by my colleagues was to use uh, artificial intelligence for automating things and for understanding what is happening on the production environment so once in a while i try to understand uh, how we can use uh, this technology to make our life easy as a tester or to identify things uh, uh, but beyond that uh, we haven't done much there i would say uh, yes mahesh you have posted the right link there tester stories correct that's what i was talking about uh all right so i i no longer see any question that i have not answered on the timeline okay so nothing more here my my journey about data time testers is very simple uh i would suggest just watch the video there on the website it is more more interesting and more exciting than what i would be saying uh but uh it's it 
it started with my my passion i would say to create a difference so i was running this a uh, newsletter when i was working with tcs and what i was reading on the blogs i was sharing that with my other colleagues and i was trying to motivate them to write to read and pair with me for doing things and i try i created my kind of internal newsletter i found it very successful effort and then i thought okay maybe we can take this idea on a broader level and this is where the idea of tea time it is was born i was closely working with pratik who is co-founder of this magazine and over the period of time we we made it into reality and yes so since then i kept on reading things i kept on writing things i got connected with many passionate writers bloggers testing expert philosophers in the community from there i started also to learn about the craft i got in touch with james bach michael bolton jerry weinberg i got connected with shrini other passionate ajay uh, for example santosh other passionate testers from india and since then i became very active participant and contributor in the global testing community or context driven testing community i would say and currently i'm part of pretty much everything that catches my attention and i am still learning so that's all i have been doing uh, and the highlight of my journey would be my curiosity i i never stop learning new things i never killed my passion for learning about testing i take immense pride for or immense pride in being a tester i'm very proud of it and every other day i try to be a better tester and i'm still i'm still walking my path okay mahesh has posted one more question ta 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 okay as a someone who was hiring testers a few years back and someone who is hiring today what different changes do you see in your own approach thought process ah uh, currently when i try to hire a tester uh, i haven't done very big changes i would say uh in past when i was hiring i was hiring more for general skill set but when i'm hiring now or interviewing i really try to hire it as someone who would be fit for that particular team or that particular project requirement yes there are skills that i definitely look for as a generic or general skills like curiosity how differently they can think whether the tester is asking questions whether he is going beyond typical click here click there and just being obsessed with the functional part of testing so i i typically look for testers awareness about quality itself what he knows more about quality criteria what he knows more about elements of the product that matter in test coverage uh, how he is able to communicate value of his work uh, which is where i also assess him for their interactional expertise i give this exercise of explaining some some testing concept in 50 words and then again explaining the same testing concepts in 150 words for example and i see whether they are able to communicate things to different audience in different ways without changing the message or the essence of it uh but uh, if you are interested on in state of testing survey we have this question asked to many test managers hiring managers and uh our findings are very very helpful so i would rather suggest you to take a look on what different test managers or hiring managers are changing in a way they are hiring things or maybe i can right away share some of the highlights from there where is it where is it what did they change <laughs> just a moment where is it career and personal development okay so what are managers looking for when hiring tester so some of the highlights are creativity is very important they expect the tester to be creative and ability to think outside box how motivative uh, how motivational the tester is how proactive it is uh, communication skills and listening skills listening skills are also very important clarity important proactiveness as i said coaching skills are also assessed depending on the role problem solving ability Uh, whether they are good team players how is their testing mindset so more or less as i said uh, it's about finding their communication skills are good how curious they are 
can they think beyond the box, outside the box, beyond typical functional aspects of software as I try to uh, do in my own assessments. And I think that's my current strategy. Okay. So I think there are no other questions, uh, but I would be happy to take part in discussion that you are having here. Shini, do you have anything more to ponder upon or to challenge me or to add something from your side on the things we discussed here? I'm sure you have more experience and insights into a bunch of things here and I'm sure we can have a very interesting discussion here if you're still there. All right, so looks like there is something more. Where is it? I, I don't see it, Mahesh. Uh, could you please tell me where is it? Okay, thank you. So I get approval from Srini. For those who don't know me, Srini is my mentor, my guru uh, from Indian testing community and I have learned a lot from him. I, I hold him in very high regards and I'm very happy to see him joining my AMA, asking me questions and saying that I have covered it well. Thank you, Srini. All right, Mahesh, then I think uh, we are done with the questions and I'm, I'm very, very impressed with the test drive and the efforts you are taking and also the people participating and trying to learn. It makes me feel very, very happy, very, very proud, particularly for our Indian testing community. And I really admire these efforts. Please keep it up and thank you for, oh, which question? Oh, you have just, uh, I think there is a lag and that's why I'm not seeing the questions here. So let me read it again. You have just started your journey so far, but still to throw more light, how much difference did it make to stay involved in community or giving back to the community? Any guess how life would have been otherwise? It makes a very big difference to be part of community, learning from community and giving it back. So I have been associated with Jerry Weinberg from seven years and I cannot imagine if I would have really reached here in absence of his guidance, in absence of guidance from people like Srini, James Bach, Michael Bolton, my colleagues, Ajay, Santosh, lots of other people. So power of community is very, very strong. And if you're part of it, you will definitely move further. But while doing it, also make sure to pay it forward. Don't just take help and move on. Whenever you come across with somebody who needs help, help them again and pass on what you have learned from your mentors your peers in community and keep this keep this cycle going on because there are lots of people who need help who are waiting for help and once they get help they they, they turn into gold so just don't do your nine to six job and go home and sit the packs and relax i would suggest if you want to survive as a tester and if you want to see testing profession becoming even more useful, uh, powerful and valuable. It is job of every tester to be part of <coughs> the community, to learn from it and to contribute to it. It's a very powerful thing. Trust me on that. I, I cannot imagine reaching wherever I have been so far without, without being part of community. Most definitely not. Okay, Mahesh, I answered your final question too. And with that, people, I thank you so very much for joining in, asking me questions and giving me an opportunity to talk and discuss. If there is anything more, I will be happy to answer. I'm part of this group. Let's keep discussing. Please, please don't stop learning. And please, please grow this tribe to 10,000 from 1,000 now. Okay, thank you and see you around. Bye-bye.